Hello, welcome to the main lecture about the Sturm Nebel systems. Today we will make a survey of the main results of this theory. So let us start with more formal definition than before. So Sturm Nebel system consists of a differential equation of the form for an unknown function x on interval a, b, with functions p, p prime, q, and r being continuous. Maybe. and such that p is greater than 0 and q is greater than 0 for all x in a, b. We look for a solution of this equation for x between a and b. So our sturm liebig system co consists of this ODE and boundary conditions alpha x at a plus beta x prime at a is equal to 0 and gamma x at b plus delta x prime at b is equal to 0 where alpha, beta, gamma, delta are constants so such that modulus of alpha plus beta is greater than 0 and modulus of gamma plus delta is greater than 0 and now to find a solution to this system of equations is called a regular sturm liebig problem. Finding an x satisfying this and that is to solve regular sturm liebig problem. If p or R are zero at at least one of the ends of the interval a b, or if the interval a b is infinite, the solution of this and that with this p or R or with an infinity interval is called a solution to a singular sturm liebig problem. Okay. Among regular sturm liebig problems, we distinguish sturm liebig problem with Dirichlet boundary conditions, and there uh, we have particular case of boundary conditions here given by x at a must be equal to x and b equal to 0. And we also have a sturm liebig problem with von Neumann boundary conditions in which x prime at a is equal to x prime and b is equal to 0. To make these definitions complete, we also consider yet another sturm liebig problem which is periodic sturm liebig problem in which functions p q and r are periodic functions with period b minus a and instead of these boundary conditions in the periodic sturm liebig problem one considers boundary conditions such that the function and its derivative is the same at the both ends of the interval a and b. So this page summarizes all the definitions related to sturm liebig problems that are of interest to us. And now let's pass to more 
advanced topics, but before this, we need to introduce two convenient uh, pieces of notation. Okay, so the first thing is that we introduce a linear operator L, so that L acting of, on a function of one variable is P x prime prime plus q x where p and q define our Stirling-Mobile equation here so this operator is called Stirling-Mobile operator in particular the Stirling-Mobile equation can be written in terms of this operator as okay so this shortens a bit of notation perhaps it is good to invoke the following fact uh, whose proof I leave as an exercise so that's the following fact almost any linear second order ODE can be written as L of U equal F so almost any second order linear on the E, let's say for function U, can be written in the sturm liouville form, namely with the main part being given by the sturm liouville operator. And uh, so this is an exercise, but essentially if you start with a linear second order on the E in the most general form, and if you only assume that the function a is not equal to zero and if you take the function b b of x and c c of x and f being f of x then you can prove that if you take p to be exponents of an integral from b divided by a dx and if you take q to be p this p divided by a times c times this c and if you take appropriate f then this equation becomes this equation okay so that's an exercise to be checked and as I said I wanted to introduce convenient notation so the first piece of notation is just introdu an introduction of this of this linear operator L which is the sturm liouville operator which is defined here the other linear operator is a linear operator BA acting on function X you're just evaluating it at a and its derivative at a is alpha beta as in here and likewise b of b at x is gamma x of b plus delta x prime of b so it's good to introduce also this operator and this operator and from now on we can start our discussion of basic results of the sturm liouville theory okay so with our compacted notation the sturm liouville problem looks like this and let's start with the first question which is how to find the eigenvalues recall that function x Satisfying this system is called eigenfunction, and constant lambda is called eigenvalue. Okay, so now our question is how to find eigenvalues of a given sturm liouville problem. So the sturm liouville equation is a second order equation, which is linear. So its solution space is two-dimensional vector space. Sturm Liouville on the E 
for a given lambda has a two-dimensional space of solutions. So let u sub lambda and v sub lambda be a basis of solutions for a given lambda. So now the most general solution of the ODE is then S times U lambda plus T times V lambda where S and T are real constants. And now if we want that X is a solution to the regular problem, X should satisfy the boundary conditions. But the boundary conditions are given in terms of a linear operator BA and linear operator BB. So we want that BA on X is zero and BB of X is zero. But since BA is a linear operator, so then we will have that BS times BA on your lambda plus T BA on V lambda must be zero as well as BB of U lambda plus T BB of V lambda must be zero. Right? But now, of course, we are interested in a solution that is not zero, so we want a solution for which S and T are not equal to zero. So for this system to have non-zero solutions for S and T, we need to have that the determinant of the matrix BA U lambda BA V lambda BB U lambda B, B V lambda must be zero. This matrix, this matrix that say here, must have rank smaller than two. Otherwise, the only way of satisfying these equations is that S and T is equal to zero, which we don't want. So, for having non-zero solutions, we need that this equation should be satisfied and in this equation lambda stays explicitly so this is an algebraic meaning non-differential equation for lambda so in other words if lambda is an eigenvalue for the Regular, regular Sturm-Leville problem that lambda should satisfy this equation. So this is a necessary condition for lambda to be an eigenvalue. Let us see on an example that this equation is quite efficient in picking up lambdas. So let us solve a problem of finding non-negative eigenvalues for the following Sturm-Leville problem. So that's a Sturm Liebel ODE corresponding to P equal 1, Q equal 0, and R equal 1. And we want the following boundary conditions that X at 0 is 0 and X prime at L is equal 0. So this is a Sturm Liebel problem with, which is regular because it corresponds to alpha equal 1 beta equal 0, gamma equal 0, delta equal 1, and A equal 0, and B equal L. So it is a sturm problem, and we are interested about eigenvalues lambda greater than 0. Can we find lambdas greater than 0, which 
for eigenvalues. Okay, so we have to start with the basis of solutions of this equation for lambda greater than zero. So we can take as u lambda sine square root of lambda x and as v lambda cosine square root of lambda x. So now we have calculated this matrix at a equals zero and b equal l. So this thing is equal this evaluated at zero. This thing is this evaluated at zero, which is one. And now this thing is derivative of this evaluated at L. So it is square root of L cosine square root of lambda L. And then this thing is derivative of that evaluated of L, which is negative square root of lambda sine square root of lambda L. And we know from here that lambda is a possible eigenvalue provided the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. But the determinant of this matrix is equal to negative square root of lambda cosine square root of lambda L. And this must be zero when lambda is greater than zero. So this is only possible the square root of lambda L is equal to negative pi half plus n pi, where n runs from 1 to, which means that lambda is equal to n minus 1 pi divided by L squared, where n run from 1 to 3, and so on. So, I have just shown you an example how effectively this matrix picks up eigenvalues of the problem. So, we started with the problem of finding all non-negative lambdas, which in principle could be any real number. But then it turns out that if it is a solution to the this regular Sturmovi problem, these lambdas should be quantized and given by this formula. Okay. So that is the first result I wanted to mention, which, which tells you how effectively find uh, eigenvalues. Now, to proceed, we need a sort of lemma, which is given in terms of an important identity. So, recall our definition of the sturm liouville operator. And now, let us apply this operator to two different functions, u and v of x, and let us calculate the following difference. u times l acting on function v minus v times l acting on function u. Okay? So, by definition, it is u p v prime prime plus u q v minus v p u prime prime minus v q u, right? So this goes, and now this part we can write as u p v prime and now we have to subtract minus p v prime u prime so that is this thing is this term 
And likewise, now we have minus, we can write this as Vp u prime prime, and we have subtract with this minus, which is we have to add plus p v prime u prime. And this again, so this thing is this thing. And now again, we see that this thing and this thing cancel. And we can write this difference as p u v prime minus v u prime and everything prime. Right, so that's an identity, which is good to know. And now let's integrate this, what we have obtained here on both sides over the X. So the integral from A to B of the left hand side is integral over the X of this thing, but this thing is a derivative with respect to X. So it is just p u v prime minus v u prime evaluated at the boundaries a and b. Okay. And now let us assume that both u and v satisfy regular boundary conditions. Remember B A of U so will be B of U equals zero and let's see let us see the same about V. Then if we assume that the right hand side of this equation is zero, so for the regular boundary conditions, the value of this integral between a and b is zero. The same if we assume that u and v satisfy periodic boundary conditions, then again, this thing here will be zero. So we've proven the following fact, let function x, which is either u or v, satisfy regular boundary conditions or periodic boundary conditions. So here this x is u or v. And then the integral from a to b of this expression is zero. So if u and v satisfy either regular boundary conditions or periodic boundary conditions, there's these holes. Okay? So that's our very important identity. And we will be using it several times in the following. So we have just proven that if u and v satisfy either regular boundary conditions v a of x equal b of x equals zero where x is u and v or periodic boundary conditions then u l v minus v L u integrated over the x between a and b is equal to zero. So that's a very important identity which we immediately apply to show that solutions to the Sturm-Liouville problems corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal. Okay, so we are going to prove the following fact. Eigenfunctions u lambda 1 and u lambda 2 
of a regular Sturm Nebel problem corresponding to two different eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 are orthogonal with respect to inner product u lambda 1 u lambda 2 sub r being an integral from a to b of u lambda 1 of x u lambda 2 of x r of x dx or this r of x remember is the function r that stays in the Sturm-Liouville equation which is so this r here is this r here okay actually the same is true for periodic boundary conditions we'll prove it only in the regular case but it is also true here so let's prove it so we have two eigenfunctions of our equation so u sub lambda 1 satisfies and u sub lambda 2 satisfies the same equation but with lambda 2 instead of lambda 1 right and now we assume in addition that both of them satisfy regular boundary conditions and now we can apply our identity taking instead of u u sub lambda 1 as instead of v u sub lambda 2 and according to this identity the left hand side will be 0 because u sub lambda 1 and u sub lambda 2 satisfy regular boundary conditions so we have that 0 is equal integral from a b u sub lambda 1 l on u sub lambda 2 minus u sub lambda 2 l u sub lambda 1 right dx so this is equal to integral from a and b u sub lambda 1 and now l on u lambda 2 is negative lambda 2 r u sub lambda 2 negative u sub lambda 2 and now l on u sub lambda 1 is negative lambda 1 r u sub lambda 1 and everything integrates over the x so we used these equations here and here now we see that we can now pull out lambda 1 minus lambda 2 from all of these these are constants so they can go in front of the integral and what we are left with is u sub lambda 1 u sub lambda 2 r dx right but this thing is nothing else but the inner product between u sub lambda 1 and u sub lambda 2 so we have that lambda 1 minus lambda 2 times this inner product is equal to 0 and now because we assumed that lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2 because we consider u sub lambda 1 and u sub lambda 2 corresponding to different eigenvalues then this thing can be 0 if and only if this is 0 so from here we have that u sub lambda 1 u sub lambda 2 inner product r is equal to 0 and therefore eigenfunctions u sub lambda 1 and u sub lambda 2 are orthogonal in this scalar product the similar argument goes in the 
periodic case. So the fact is true for both periodic and regular boundary conditions. Okay, so that's our fact number three. Let's make three standard examples of this what we have here. We again consider the simplest Sturm Liouville ODE. But now we first consider the Dirichlet boundary conditions. which is the regular case, and recall that it was just that x0 and xl is equal to 0. And then we know that the eigenvalues for these problems are lambda n equals n squared pi squared by l squared, where n runs from all the natural numbers. And then we have a corresponding eigenfunctions to each of these lambda n, which are un sine n pi divided by l x. And we get that integral from 0 to l of un un, which is the inner product between un and un, is either 0 or L half, depending on this, if n is different than m, or if n is equal to m. And because of that, we associate to this Dirichlet problem the sequence of functions where n runs from 1 to infinity, and the sequence of functions because of this is an autonomous system of eigenfunctions of this problem. Right? And here I use the word autonormal because due to the appearance of this coefficient here, they are also normalized to one. So that was the first example of this that the eigenfunctions are orthogonal, not only they are orthogonal, but we can make them even orthogonal. So if we consider von Neumann problem for the same ODE, we again have eigenvalues in the form n squared pi squared l squared, but now n runs from 0, 1, 2, and so on. And the corresponding eigenfunctions are u n in cosine n pi l x. And here, because of this set of integrals, we have a sequence of functions which are 1 l square root plus cosines n pi lx, where n went from 1 to infinity, and this sequence of functions with a function labeled by 0 here, and the function with number n here, is an orthonormal system of eigenfunctions for a Neumann problem, associated with, all the time, the same simplest sturm the and eventually, as our third example, we have still the same ODE, but now with periodic boundary conditions, and we recall that these were like x of 0 must be equal to x of L, and x prime of 0 must be equal to x prime at L, and here we also were dealing with this problem before, we had eigenvalues ln to be equal to 4n squared pi squared divided by l squared, where n were running from 0, 1, 2, 3, and all the other natural numbers. And here we had a one-dimensional 
vector space of solutions if n was equal to zero and two-dimensional vector space of solutions if n was not equal to zero but natural, right? So we had here functions like un equal sine 2n pi divided by lx where n was running from 1 to 3 and so on and we had vn to be cosine 2n pi divided by lx where n was now running from 0, 1, to 3 and all the other natural numbers and now because of this we can see that here the set of functions given by constant function like this plus functions like that with cosines here where n runs from 1 to infinity and functions here with 2l and now sines to n pi lx where n runs from 1 to infinity and this set of functions is again an orthonormal system of eigenfunctions for the periodic problem for the Sturm-Liebig system. So you see the fact that I was just invoking here was telling me that the eigenfunctions corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal but here in the periodic monetary case function this one and this one when n is fixed corresponds to the same eigenvalue but still they are orthogonal the fact we have just proven was only telling that the eigenfunctions corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal but in this particular case even eigenfunctions corresponding to the same eigenvalues can be made orthogonal so that's an example let us now pass to the next result from the sturm liebel theory the next result i want to tell you is the following fact the eigenvalues of a regular sturm liebel problem are all real numbers. The same is true for periodic boundary conditions and for many others, but I will prove it only for the regular Sturm-Liebel problem. So let's prove it. So we have Sturm-Liebel equation and boundary conditions and we assume that the function capital X satisfies this system of equations with an eigenvalue lambda and we don't know if lambda is real or complex so let us assume that lambda is a complex number okay so now if x satisfies this system let's take the complex conjugation of these equations on their both sides but recall that l the operator l was given in terms of real functions q r and p they were real and both boundary operators ba and bb were also real because they were built in terms of real numbers alpha beta gamma and delta so these two operators were also real also remember that all the three operators that stay here are linear operators and that the operation of taking complex conjugation is antilinear. So taking complex conjugation on both sides of this, we get that L conjugate of X is equal to negative conjugate of lambda R conjugate of X. Likewise, B A on X conjugated is equal to B B on x conjugated n is equal to zero because essentially 
L conjugated is L and BA conjugated is BA and B, B conjugated is BB because all of these operators are real linear operators, right? So if X satisfies this, then X conjugated satisfies this system of equations. So this means that X conjugated satisfies the same sturm liouville problem with the same boundary conditions, but with eigenvalue lambda bar, which is a conjugation of our original lambda. So in particular, because function X and its conjugation satisfy the regular boundary conditions, we can apply our important identity, which says that the integral from A to B of X times sturm liouville operator applied on X conjugated minus X conjugated times sturm liouville operator acting on x, the x is equal to zero. Okay. So let's see what does it mean. Because x satisfies this and x bar satisfies this, we can write it as integral from a to b. Now that will be lambda r x x from here and the negative lambda bar r x x from here which means that if we pull out lambda minus lambda bar we'll be left with integral from a to b from x times x bar times r dx but this is nothing but integral from lambda minus lambda bar from a to b of the modulus square of the function x times r dx but now r is positive and x is a non-zero solution to this problem so therefore x squared is also positive so there is a positive function here so this thing never vanish so for this to be zero lambda bar minus lambda must be equal zero and therefore lambda must be real so what we have proven here is that if we have an eigenfunction of the sturm liouville problem corresponding to a eigenvalue. This eigenvalue must be real if we are in the setting of regular sturm liouville problem. The same is true in the periodic case, but I will not prove it. So from this we know that all eigenvalues of the regular sturm liouville problems are real numbers. Okay, so now once we have this fact, we can ask what about eigenfunctions? So we know that for the periodic or regular sturm liouville problem all eigenvalues are real. Is the same true for eigenfunctions? Well, it is not so. For a very simple reason. If x is a real eigenfunction corresponding to an eigenvalue lambda, then cx, where c is a constant, is also eigenfunction of Stroniville equation corresponding to the same eigenvalue. But if we take C to be complex number, X was real and we produced a complex valued eigenfunction corresponding to the real eigenvalue. So not all eigenfunctions are real. 
for this simple reason, because you can simply multiply a real eigenfunction by a complex number and you will obtain complex eigenfunction. But actually, it is even worse. Remember our case of periodic boundary conditions for the equation x double prime plus lambda x equals zero. Remember that there, for n from 1 to 3 and so on, we have a two-dimensional space of solutions to the sturm liouville equation, which was just cosines 2n pi divided by Lx and sines 2n pi divided by Lx. And they were orthogonal to each other and they were real, they correspond to the, corresponded to the same eigenvalue. Uh, which was equal for n squared pi divided by l squared. But if we take this eigenfunction and this eigenfunction corresponding to the same eigenvalue and we add them with a coefficient i here, we make a function which is exponents of 2n pi i divided by l x. And this function, which is eigenfunction of this equation corresponding to eigenvalue lambda equal 4 n squared pi squared l squared. This function is not a constant multiple of real eigenfunctions. So actually not only the problem is that you can simply multiply any function by a complex number and you will get the complex eigenfunctions. You can take linear combinations of real eigenfunctions with complex coefficients now, producing complex eigenfunctions which are not a simple multiple of a real eigenfunction by a complex number. So, there's a warning that there are complex-valued eigenfunctions. So this was a bad thing, but in this context we also have a good thing. We have the following result. Let's write it as a theorem. Let lambda be an eigenvalue of a regular or periodic storm Liouville problem. And let V sub lambda be a subspace spanned by all the eigenfunctions corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. Then V lambda admits an orthonormal basis of real eigenfunctions. Okay, and we have seen such situation in the periodic case where for given lambda there was this two-dimensional space spanned by these guys and these guys and they were real and orthonormal within this subspace v lambda okay